Goedenavond iedereen. Bonsoir à toutes et à tous et bienvenue. Nous poursuivons notre cycle de conférences internationales d'architecture de cette année 2024 avec la venue de l'architecte chilienne Cecilia Puga. Elle nous présentera son approche architecturale et l'importance de ce qu'elle appelle le système matériel des bâtiments, ce qui en définit le caractère selon elle. Cecilia Puga, rent haar eigen architectuurbureau sinds 1995 in Santiago. Ze heeft met haar innovatieve aanpak haar stempel gedrukt op de architectuur. Ze werkt in een geheel andere context uh, dan Europa, namelijk in Chili, waar armoede en aardbevingen een realiteit zijn. La revue 2G a consacré un numéro à la pratique de Cecilia Puga en 2010. Elle a participé à la Biennale d'architecture en 2016. Et depuis 2020, elle dirige le musée chilien d'art précolombien. Cecilia, Zalons on the Randere, et Palazzo Pereira late on Decke. Un negatin de Eus néoclassique, Hereus, dat getransformeerd werd dans le chilien ce ministère Ivan Culture. Un wedstrijd die ze won met Paola Velasco en Alberto Moletto. La série de conférences 2024 est rendue possible grâce à un certain nombre d'organisations que nous tenons à remercier pour leur soutien. Le sponsor de cette conférence, Assa Abloy, notre partenaire structurel Febelsem, notre sponsor structurel Dieteren Imo, de Vlaams Overheid, la ville de Bruxelles, la région de Bruxelles-Capitale ainsi que la Fédération Wallonie-Bruxelles. Merci aussi à Beaux-Arts pour avoir coproduit cet événement avec A+. And now I give the floor to Cecilia Puga and I wish you all a good lecture. Bonsoir. Merci à tous d'être ici. Je suis vraiment ravie de connaître votre ville et, et votre pays. C'est la première fois pour moi. Et je veux remercier très particulièrement Beaux-Arts pour, pour me tenir ici ce soir et aussi à Plus Architecture et à Marie-Lise Jacobs, Artistic Director, Lara Molino, Organizer of Exhibition and Lectures, And Beaux Arts Center, um, and of course, Tangi Janmar, who produced all my trip and, and accommodation in a, very, in a very nice way. And so, thank you to you all. And um, I will start tonight by looking again uh, at four cartographies produced at different time in the 20th century which represent early effort to situate the Americas uh, culturally and South America in particular in a global context. This is back Mr. Fuller Di Dimension World produced in 1943 and published by Life uh, magazine in New York in, in the same year. In this representation, Fuller anticipated the globalized world of the end of the centuries as a single continuous continent. It is dismembered by the unitary pan Pangea presented without considering the reality of the magnetic pole as a guide. It presents us an image of physical unity that speaks of hyperconnections, of possible migration from one end of, to the globe of, to the other, that dismantle hierarchies and open up new point of view about the definitions of unit, borders, and edges. The large continental island make it possible to amplify ecological, cultural, and social implication of the world order, which today are topics that structure contemporary debate a counterpoint to fuller global vision is the series of drawings of South America published in the poem Amereida in 1967. The epic poem Amereida, a direct reference to Homer's Eneida, is a choral work derived from the notes, drawings, and experiences of the land journey made by teachers from the Valparaiso School of Architecture and their guests in 1965 
two years before of the publication of the Amereida books. It is also the founding text of the first Chi Chilean architectural avant-garde, which emerged during the 70s and founded the open city of Ritoque facing the Pacific in the coast of Chile. Starting from Tierra del Fuego, the road is traced by superimposing the Southern Cross into the outline of the continent, through creating the two axes that cut across the one another at Santa Cruz de la Sierra in Bolivia. According to Amereida, this will be the poetic capital of South America and therefore the natural destination of the inaugural journey. The poem consolidates a vision of South America as a new project that in some way recalls the tabula rasa, a new continental capital, the omission of political borders, and in a certain sense, the omission of the pre-existing cultures before the arrival of the European colonizer. It is an empty and invented territory, an inland sea, detached from a larger context to the point that it rebelled against and invert the north-south order. If we go back in time to the 40s, to the same year in which the Maxian world was published in New York, the Uruguayan Joaquin Torres Garcia, an artist uh, very renowned, has already drawn a precedent for Amereida, the inverted map of South America declaring the South is our North. And in going so, he recognized the differences between how the world is read and constructed from Europe compared to South America. Here, for one thing, as the sun traveled across the sky from the North, it appears somewhere else. But unlike the map produced by the member of Amereida, the declared autonomy from the Northern Hemisphere in, is nuanced by the presence of the Isthmus of Panama and the drawing of the caravel on the Atlantic coast. Both figures speak of links and connection with other territories and understand the impossibility of isolation. Both South Americas, that of the Valparaiso group and that of Joaquin Torres Garcia, are nuanced attempt of decolonization and affirmation of the differences between the territories and Europe in the and the impossibility of any direct transfer between the two of them. And also the scope of globalization seems to have proved the imaction work and its fluid space of collapsed time and homogenization, right? Globalization is not implemented homogeneously and it is not as hegemonic as it seems. In a way, Bagmite Fuller's map and the inverted Americas of Torres Garcia and Amereida are today two layers of the same reality. One last cartography to review today are the drawing from Le Corbusier trip to South America in 1929, which illustrate not only his proposal for the business city in Buenos Aires, um, a series of uh, 650 feet scrape crapper to be installed on a platform over the Rio de la Plata, but fundamentally America as an empty field open to experiment and to the future. Le Corbusier took cross section before and after the proposal Across the continent sideways, started with the Atlantic Ocean on the left and ending with the Andes mountain range on the right, and then the Pacific Ocean. Paradoxically, this cross section are made facing the south also. Chile, as seen by Le Corbusier in 1929, is the way the Andes mountain fall in the Pacific. It is something less than a cliff, it is a rugged somehow no, no worthless territory. It is the place of the accident, of the catastrophe, of the earthquake. And the Corbusier is not wrong. It is the meeting point between the Nazca plate and the South American plate. It is literally a crack, a place of friction. In Chile, 
as in many countries in the region, it is often tragedies that have shaped our history. Emergency has been fairly permanent state and our relationship with it is one of tense coexistence. Repairing there is unavoidable and in this context it acquires physical, symbolic and social dimensions. The inverted Americas, one that looks toward its inland sea, the Corbusier premise of the future, is a reality that has been repaired a thousand times, full of seams and patches. But that is far from being the only thing we need to do today. What is today some uh, that is why today some initiatives that seek to influence global agendas, such as those proposing global moratoria on construction, stop demolition, and others, do not seem to be the most efficient answer of the urgent needs we have as a planet, and do not seem to fit in this scenario of enormous deficit. At least, they should not be adopted without adjustment, without translation, or at least without distortion. Somehow, America must once again insist on that south that is not its north, or that inland sea of the mid of the 20th century. In any case, and returning to the action of repairing and the damage uh, that activated Chilean art researcher Ariel Richards writes in the catalogue of the last uh, exhibition of Marcela Correa, one of the most important uh, sculptors in Chile today. I quote, crack mark a break in the landscape and always signal something that changes. They are an interruption into what was continuous. One does not usually talk about, what, about the benefit of crack, and I say, they are respite, a good interruption, because the wind blows through the cracks. They oxygenate, they ventilate, they generate new air. I will now, now like to present four projects. All are linked in some way to the action of repairing, and all offer opportunity for the present of architecture. The first seeks to repair a historical depth, and, and we call it the Venus flytrap. Invited by the renowned Chilean archi uh, visual artist Josefina Gilisasti in, in 2021, we won a public competition to build the first urban sculpture dedicated to women to be installed in a public space in Chile. Recent debates over the figure of the monument determine the formal and symbolic decision taken in our proposal. It is in part symbolic, in part action. Fear of dissonance mingles in it with the need to bring together and build a new social fabric. Consequently, the proposal seeks to re-signify value that in the past were associated with women the internal, the intimate, a place of refuge, deployed in a public hab habitable space that by its form receives but also protects itself. In this way, it inverts the traditional relationship of the monument that is erected to be gazed at and welcome the gazer inside. And it is activated in an action no longer for static observation, but sensory and experience, experiential. The work is near completion and stand in the Parque Malpocho Rio, one of the most important urban projects currently under development, a public green area covering the southern bank of the Mapocho Rio that crosses the city of Santiago in an east-west direction as seen in the aerial photograph you have here. At the level of the making, the fabric that binds together the material culture of various geographies in America goes back to ancestral basquery and to the work that is crystallized in a trade past passed down from generation to generation among women artisans. 
the choice of these images seek to connect creatively with the present political context and its relationship with public art. The mass protest that took part, uh, took possession of Chile Street in October 19, uh, 2019, and the pandemic uh, that followed then disrupted the relationship between art and public space. Somehow, dissent and irresolution are now the essence of public life in our country and maybe worldwide. Representation of women is expressed in a greater plurality and diversity, but also in the acknowledgement that today it is a task, an horizon, that is still under construction. The second project center on the debate about global warming and timber construction as a possibility for facing present and future deficit. In this sense, it participates in a process of repairing ecological and environmental damage by proposing solutions with low CO2, CO2 emission. It is also part of our research we have been having in our studio about the structural and spatial capacity of all to define spaces with strong internal character. Arauco is a big uh, company, one of the most important Chilean companies with a global presence launched and uh, producing uh, pine wood. And they launched a competition in 2022 for the development of a high-rise building project entirely done by wood, which is something uh, absolutely uh, new in Chile. The building has to come up with an innovative, replicable, and industrializable system for high-rise construction. This project developed jointly in 2019 with Paula Velasco, Dr. Joseph Schwartz, and Pierluigi Dacunto from ETH Zurich in a competition for the design of Arauco headquarters, sought to achieve clean and restful wood surfaces and highly transparent uh, and, and light field space aided by the precision of prefabrication methods in wood construction. The exploration of material had addresses ways of combining the structure and ambience in a single entity by removing most secondary element. It focused on the vault as a supporting structural element capable of producing a quality spatial effect. We came up a system that solved the structures, floor, and ceiling, as well as technical spaces for the network of installation inside the building by using a single construct constructive uh, component, thereby expanding the range of flexibility for the organization of the plan. The supporting structure consists of a system of columns and wooden slab composed of unidirectional strip with a hollow cross section of almost triangular shape supported by solid column made of laminated wood. The slab element would be assembled using post-tension cable linked to the wooden element located in the top and bottom of the beams. The 90 degree change of direction of the beam from one floor to the other allows each beam to be supported every 18 meter by columns and vertical cable uh, traction cables. The reinforced concrete uh, cores are activated to resist winds and earthquake, as well as other sources of lateral load. From its synthetic nature, the structure of this proposal embodied much more than the mere solution of load transmission or the stability of the building. Rather, it brought together in its own reality the material, atmospheric, and orderly dimension of the project while enhancing its performative capacity. At first glance, it appeared to be a concealed structure. However, it is very much exposed. Everything we would have seen in the building is a structure. Every surface making up the space in both architecture and structure. 
floors and ceilings are two sides of the same component, precisely designed and calculated to meet architecture and structural requirements simultaneously and as efficient as possible. Nothing is surplus, everything is bone. The, the two last projects are um, connected by the notion of amalgam and infill, which is a substantial part of repair processes, architecture ability to unite with the pre-existed structure through the introduction of new matter inside vac vacant spaces. In our context, these voids waiting to be occup occupied are often degraded structures from the late 19th century. One on the left, you can see the ruins of the uh, Palacio Subercaso in Valparaíso. On your right, the emptied central space of the Palacio Pereira in Santiago. Earthquake and fire have taken their troll, but have opened opportunity to infill and introduce new construction in this structure. They can reinforce all structure at, and at the same time upload, update outmoded spatial systems. I will sh show you uh, the regional archive of Valparaiso on which we are currently working after winning a public competition in 2022. The building should start the construction stage at the end of this year or the beginning of the 2025. Valparaiso was the Chile's main port during the 19th century and has a particular urban morphology that has driven a process of adaptive urban occupation. It was Chile's first port, and in 2003, UNESCO declared the historical district of Valparaiso a world heritage site. Occupation of the bay began in the mid-16th century. Given the scarcity of flat terrain close to the port and the coastline, the densification and overlapping of activities was a feature of the spatial and programmatic structure of this uh, neighborhood. Valparaiso was Chile's main port. Sorry, I went. It is, st it is still possible to find building was architecture bears witness to the coexistence of economic and residential activity as seen in vertical adjoint, adjoining warehouse, commercial premises, offices, and living spaces. The Palacio Subercaso on the left in this photograph belong to the, this typology of mixed use uh, building for rent, which occupy a large part of the Valparaiso flatland. However, 20th century economic transformation required the port's progressive modernization, which meant that the city was gradually left behind. As one of the initiatives aimed to reactivate Valparaiso and to halt the city's accelerating decline, the restoration of the Palacio Subercaso and the installation within it of the Valparaiso Regional Archive is an opportunity to lay the foundation of a process of urban renewal in an area of great fragility. It is likely or rather to be expected that restoration of these remains of the Palacio Subercaso will be a model for future intervention in the area. Our proposal strives to defend the pro uh, and protect the urban profile which seemed to us to be the most significant value to protect. What is left on the Palacio Subercaso is today, today is a container without content, a cup without the capacity to hold the amount of liquid required by the program. Its style, its materiality and shape conflict with that program whose dimension were too great for the space available. This dilemma forced a new focus on the building as a facade. The conservation and restoration of the facade 
and a few other building elements that are still preserved will comply with the Venice character, charter, sorry, to ensure they're permanent without questioning or prejudices, thus adapting the intervention to what is pre-established by the existing structure. But when what remains is only the surface and not the architecture substance, a new approach is necessary to avoid the inherent risk of restarting to facades in which the packaging hide a contemporary body of this wish. This creates a double negative effect. The new is embarrassed while the old no longer makes sense. The new building filled the space fed by the gas explosion that destroyed the entire interior of the building in 2007. The facade and its interior are interlocked. This structural connection offers a fine and fragile texture given density to the space that mediates between one materiality and another, between one time and another. The supporting function between the new interior and the fragile existing facade is ambiguous. Is the original masonry facade that supports the technical space of the archive, or is the archive that holds up and strengthens the original facade? We do not we don't we do not want to answer that question. Instead, by concentrating the project focus, especially in this physical and conceptual space we can bind together conservation and contemporaneity, connection and discretion, past and future. What we prefer to do is, to, is simply to show interest. What is durable, we support. What is integral, we keep. What is damaged, we replace with material similar to the original ones. The only addition will will be to set up a horizontal steel element which will allow different degrees of protection and support the functional need of the entrance level. Our main goal was to establish the height of the new building in order to maintain the ratio of the historical area measurement and proportions, and to recognize the two ways to inhabit Valparaíso from the urban and from the geographic scale. This meant a compact and dense structure which satisfied the client requirement but defended the urban volumetry. Three vertical layers suggest a new order. The ground level connecting the urban realm and the interior toward the archive offices. Then a second layer, which are the deposit or storage, occupy a large part of the head of the historical remain, organized in five open plan externally covered by a layer of yellow ochre felt. Then a secondary second layer, uh, a third part, open to the landscape and to the big scale of the Valparaiso Bay. Um, on the top of the roof, um, and, and in the in the right side you can see the three level, and in, in the middle represented the the whole uh, the, the the deposit for the for the document. Uh, the the main issue here was to um, to achieve a structure that leaves um, a most free plan to organize in a very free way the, the, all the material that has to be um, maintained in here. Um, the last project, uh, it's a project that uh, was already built. Uh, it was finished on nine, uh, 2019, uh, just uh, before starting the pandemic. And so it started to be in use on 2021. The Palacio Pereira is the last project I will show you today. It was developed by a multidisciplinary team and involved the renovation and restoration of a fairly damaged structure and the construction of a new building in the lot. Originally built with adobe brick and wooden structure during its first century, Santiago was a, 
was somehow what horizontal and low density conurbation, conurbation. Our palaces, if they really existed at all, were barely mirages that hid behind ornate facade, interior garden, and mud walls. Periodic earthquake took their, took their toll, and well into the 20th century, the fragile fabric that was Santiago had to be rebuilt from time to time. In the case of this building, a large section was demolished over time, spoiling its original layout. Our project tried to recover the ratio of ground occupation as in the original setting, while reconfiguring the courtyard at the back of the lot. The operation of infilling that we propose bring back the original form of the plot as originally built, while providing the opportunity for reinforce the structure of the historical remains. This double operation also provides accommodation for several offices for the Ministry of Culture and Heritage. The new wing is basically a series of open spaces around a central courtyard that restored the urban fabric that Inno proposed originally. Repetitive cage-shaped uh, columns, uh, 25 per 25 centimeter pillar in smooth concrete, separated at 1.59 centimeter uh, from each other, built up the interior facade, aiming for a porous and light interior and an ambiguous borderline between the new and the, and the pre-existing. That three-dimensional facade emphasized the temporary and dynamic nature of what we understand as a heritage intervention, alluding to a work in process and a translucent lattice. The links and connection between the old and the new, the, the new building are treated with, with ceremony. It is about juxtaposing frictions and the encounter of different times, material and technologies. The noisy and the dense isotropic concept for the structure made out of concrete columns stand in contrast to the continuity and massiveness of the masonry walls without concealing them. The cage-shaped pillar stands as a memorable feature of the new structure. They provide pro protection from the sun and introduce an airy space which mediate between the old, restore structure and the new spaces around the courtyard. The three-dimensional condition of this borderline also create a transitional relational space that help to understand the situation of the new building and the historical residence. It celebrates the simultaneity and coexistence of different periods of time superimposed on one another. Lucien Ambroise Senot was one of the European professionals that the Chilean state brought to the country to design work that will be emblematic of the new republic institutional order. In the, in the beginning of the, of the 19th century. During the, his stay in Chile, he enjoyed connection to the local elite, and alongside his public work, he accepted some private commissions, such as Don Luis Pereira's residency in 1872. Hinault de, de, designed a building for the Pereira family uh, in neoclassical style, following iconic, Ionic and Corinthian principle with two levels on its main front. Its position adhered to the still colonial urban structure in how it occupied the plot and respect the uninterrupted continuous facade of Santiago Historical Center. However, typologically, it displays new uses and systems of distribution. In the first place, it takes into consideration the greater, the greater complexity and stratification of social relations 
and second, it provides a scenography suited to the new domestic aspiration on the late 19th century elite in Chile. The transept is the main element within the plan. It organizes and orients the most important spaces on the ground floor. This glazed gallery led from the street to a series of rooms and salons and then ended in the patio that occupy the rear of the property and separate the services areas from those used by the family. Key to the organization of all the spaces of the house, the gallery was intended to serve as an interior street, as a place of representation, circulation, and chance encounters. At the end of the 70s, and shortly after being declared a national monument, the building entered a phase of decay and abandonment. The Chilean state bought the building in 2011 to transform it into the headquarters of the Ministry of Culture, Art and Heritage. A year later, together with architect Paula Velasco and Alberto Moleto, and a group of advisors and specialists such as Alan Chandler, Fernando Perez, and Luis Cercos in the field of restoration, and Pedro Bartolomé and Christian Sandoval in engineering and structural consolidation, we won the international competition announced by the government, and the process of recovering the palace began. The restoration of a historic building can be understood as a material operation that will restore it, it to its original splendor. But this will also imply ignoring the history of the building and its future. It will mean placing us as restorers in the role of being authorities with power to collapse its history at an arbitrary defined juncture, eliminate all traces and the value they have that time has left imprinted on the building fabric. The way in which conservation and renovation were amalgamated in the project was crucial in order to inject life into the building by wrapping, protecting, making visible, and incorporating its condition as a ruin. William Morris celebrated the superimposition of times and uses based on the requirement that buildings were expected to meet. But this was nuanced by the way in which this superimposition were executed. The skill with which such adjustments were introduced must have been a testament to the artistic ability of our time. Intrinsically, what was to be done included how it was done. The restoration of the Palacio Pereira involved the recovery of many already lost traders, and there was a special care for the detail with which different aspects of the project were resolved. The material strategy is at the center keys, key of this project. The project sought to comprehend its complexity without prioritizing either the new intervention or the elegant and decadent character of the Palacio. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Cecilia, for your interesting lecture. Thank you all for being here tonight.